Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give glory to your name. Glory. We establish, Lord, that from here, let your light so shine. Amen. Let it multiply in this second service. Amen. And let your name be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Can we give the Lord the loudest of ovation? Let's Hallelujah. bless you. Hallelujah. You may be seated in God's presence. God bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Thank you, anointed mistress, for that beautiful song. Hallelujah. Wow, glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are the air I breathe. Oh, Lord. You know the song? You are, you are the air I breathe. Oh, Lord. You are, very simple song. You are the air I breathe. Five times. You are the air I breathe. Oh Lord, you are. You are the air I breathe. Oh Lord, you are. You are the air I breathe. Oh Lord, you are. You are the air I breathe. Four more times.
Aleluia! sound we are going to be fasting on friday and we will not be sleeping on our beds on friday night we will be praying it will be our first vigil in this property and we are going to be spending good time praying i i i don't personally like to keep people awake at night i i'm not sure we've done that in a long time. In a long time. But I woke up yesterday morning and I told my wife, I said, God will have us not sleep on our beds on the night of the 20th into 21st. Am I correct? Is it 19th into 20th? 19th into 20th, yes. That we will be praying from 11 to 3 o'clock. I want to invite you. You can fast from morning till 3 o'clock, break by 3. And we will be, it's our first vigil here since we got to this property. I just know that God spoke to my heart clearly. Pick a fast on this 20th. What's the big deal? That's not supposed to be a big problem. And he said, don't sleep on your bed. Gather the people to pray. So I've told you my own bit. You know I can't force it from your bed. But I've told you, just leave that bed so that you can have to sleep on it for the rest of time. 13th, is it 19th now? Stroke 20th. 11 to 3 a.m. We are not sleeping all. We are going to be praying. We are going to be praising God. We are going to be dancing and celebrating. We'll do that this weekend. We'll do it next weekend. And I know that some of you want to travel. I know some of us like our beds. We can't promise you too much, but I promise you that please, you'll be praying between those hours and praising God. Your life will grow. You would have, you know the good thing about prayer is that prayer can be stored. So when you pray like that, you are storing prayers for the day of need. You will not be lacking prayers in Jesus' name. Come on, give me a better response than I said in Jesus' name. Alright, that is number one. Number two, I want to remember to tell us that you know, those of us that know about it, we are here on a project. We are going to be expanding this place and doing so much more by the grace of God. I want to invite you to know that that project exists and you can give generously towards it. We are not a church that will be taking offering every day or every time, no. But I want to let you know that there's so much work going on that your giving will count. Tell me, tell me, so your giving will count. If you perhaps want to do your generosity, please make it good to the church Hebron account. It is a good thing that, you are, that your money is involved in the house of God. I want to let you know, nobody puts his money in God's house and regrets. And this is the house of the living God. And you will be blessed as you do so 
generously. Number three thing I want to say before I go ahead to teach is that this month has been declared our month of healing and health. I want to prophesy over your life. Health will not be far from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will not collect your money and spend it on medical bills. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to say that again. I say you will not collect your money and spend on medical bills. In the name of Jesus Christ. God's love will speak for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, we have Thanksgiving services. We've had two weddings in the last two weeks. And more still to come. Praise God. There's a sister that wants to see me for counseling for her wedding. And I'm like, just be getting married like that. There's one that is already slated for January again. And all these brothers getting married. Please don't let them take our sisters. Amen. Brothers, mature. Ask her out. She will not say no. Amen. Brother Shilly, you are dating someone already, are you? The way you are laughing, it's not you I'm talking to. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Some of you can't just laugh. You are so serious in God's house. No problem. So, but what I'm just saying is I want us to make sure the sisters don't get married out. You see what Brother Gabriel did? Broccoli? That's right. You see how they did it? Not that they just carry them and carry them to Borno. Exporting our sisters out. Brothers, if you already know, bring another brother that will come and meet her. Let nobody escape. The Bible says that Moses counted everybody and there was nobody missing yes, in the camp. Nobody is missing. In the name, nobody, no brother will carry my sister out. After investing in your destiny, one brother will now come say, I want to marry her. You are not marrying anything. In Jesus' name. <laughs> so, but brothers, please, since we can't marry more than one wife, let us bring more brothers. Sisters, am I speaking? Of? Yes. Solid brothers, though. Abby? And sisters, please, when they come to ask you, don't size them up for all that you see now. Life changes fast for men. Fast. You don't believe them. Tell you. You just look at the brother. When he comes next time, you'll be like, ah, you have changed. Though. How won't he change? Thank God you said no. You know, so I'm saying strategically. <laughs> and because people that look at you like that concluded that that's all to you. Eh. Sister, relax. Life can be better. It's Malachi. It's Malachi. Malachi. When Malachi comes, you will see, you won't believe. Ah, now you. Malachi. That's why it comes before Matthew. <laughs> because Matthew is a tax collector. He saw too much of money in Malachi. <laughs> Uh, that was one thing I'm sharing, Rev. Now, don't go and put that in Twitter. <laughs> oh my God! Why am I cracking jokes this morning? Let's go into God's word. Praise God! All right. So, in the last couple of weeks, we've been speaking about healing and health. Praise the Lord! Do me a favor. Look at your neighbor. Tell the person you say you are healed. You are healthy. Tell the person say it's not Pastor saying it. Say it is the word of God. Say I therefore prophesy according to the word of God. That in healing you are healed and in health you are healthy. Now let's take a first search of that scripture. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17. The Bible says, I will restore your health and I will heal you of your wounds. Clearly God calls himself Jehovah Sid Kenu, the Lord our healer. Jehovah Raphaka, beg your pardon. The Lord our healer. God is a healer. God has always been a healer. And he claims, I am the one that forgives your iniquities and healeth you of all your diseases. Your God is a healer. Somebody say, my God is a healer. You know, some people believe that God is the reason why they are sick. No, don't think like that. God is not the reason why you are in trouble. God is the reason why you can come out of trouble. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It is Satan's job to give God a bad name. If you were Satan too, you would do the same. To make God blackmail God and make everything look, you know, say, well, if God was there, why is that? Why are these barbar things happening? Why would that, that, that kind of barbar thing happen? Is that Satan's attempt to give God a bad name? And I'm saying, if you were Satan also, you would do the same thing or even worse. When Satan came and wanted to take permission to tempt Job, to test Job or tempt him, better still, Job said, I mean, Satan, Satan said that, have you not protected Job? You have kept him and everything around him. God is keeping you and everything around you. I said God is keeping you and everything around you. Job chapter 2 verse 6, if you will bring it up. He said, have you not, he will say, will Job serve you in vain? 
Will Job serve you in vain? He said, have you not kept him and everything around him? I want to prophesy again. Everything around you is kept. Because of you, your neighbors are kept. Because of you, your office is kept. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Second service, can we do it better? Amen. I said you are kept. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are taking a venture into this subject and it is important that we can deposit it properly. He said, and the Lord said unto Satan, behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Look at, back up to verse 3. Let, let's just look at what he said there, verse 3. He said, look, I want to show you something. This was before Christ ever showed up. Can you give us verse 3? Is it coming up? He said, and the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like unto him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. So Satan has been fighting that God should destroy Job without a cause. Look at the next verse. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath he will give for his life. Saying, Man, he will serve oh, man. That's what Satan was doing. Oh. He has been pushing God since this guy are just prospering him too much. Can you imagine that God and man having that and Satan having that discussion? There's somebody who think that God and Satan are opposing themselves. That they are fighting. Kind, kind, kind. You kill my teacher. It's a lie. If Satan is having anybody, it's us that we are dealing with him. God and Satan were yearning. Have you considered my answer? Can you imagine that kind of discussion? I would have thought that it's you, Satan, you have come again. Boah, get out of here. Hey, Joe, Michael, cut up. No, 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 no. So Satan was watching, chilling. And God said, have you considered uh, God said can look for trouble? Who asked him? He said, Have you considered my servants this? And who would have ever thought that the things that happened to Job that week in one day were spiritual? You, who would have ever believed that it was a spiritual conversation that provoked such calamity? And somebody says it's no longer happening, it's still happening. It's the same Satan, it's the same God. But this time we are fortified. This time, when it comes, we now know what to do. Am I making some sense? Let me show you something. Give me that scripture, please. So, suddenly, oh, the same guy, one day, just one day, then he, was, he said, but put forth thy hand now and touch his bone and his flesh. You see that that's, that's what Satan is advocating for, to touch your bone and your flesh. He will not succeed. Amen. Say that amen like, like you are alive here. Say it. Amen. He said, and Job will curse you to your face. Some of us, if all that happened was that your gas finished. You have been shouting, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Why has that forsaken me? <laughs> because your gas finished. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Gas, oh. <laughs> you don't want to go and buy 8,000. Sir, God has not forsaken you. It's normal life. It's normal. I get what I'm saying here. Stop confusing challenges with attack. Some things are normal. Your gas will finish. All the cookies you've been cooking since. <laughs> so, I'm trying to draw your attention to something. That there is a satanic ploy to frustrate humanity. Yes, and he's making strong advocacy from heaven. That last time that you had a road rage and did like this to the other driver. You know, I can't see it on TV. I hope you are not catching it. You know. <laughs> and Satan said, see your son. Is that how a child of God should be? Is that how God's pride is? We shouting God's pride, God's pride of Is that how God's pride should be? The Bible says Satan is accusing us day and night. Imagine somebody standing day and night. Lord, did you see what he did to, to, to his wife? Did you, did you, why should you pray? Day and night. That's why Satan is not everywhere. It's demons that are everywhere. Satan can only be in one place at a time. You know where he is? A, with God on your case. Accuser. I'm not the one that said it's Revelation 12, 11. Our accuser day and night. Revelation 12, 10 and 11. Then verse 11 tells us that we overcame. Day and night. So, did you see what it did? He did not pay our tight. And you, this God, you will still bless her. So God is forced to say, chill. Sit down now tell God, will the judge of the earth not do right? God will now say, ah, what's wrong with you? God will now be wishing in his mind that you are intelligent enough to pray for forgiveness. In your mumuism, you'll be going around saying, 
<laughs> you say, hey, see what God has done to me. Hey, you, you that we are praying for in heaven, that you should do the right thing. Are we making some sense here? It's the same Satan, it's the same God. So stop thinking that it has stopped existing. Now he just gave us authority over that Satan. Because Job did not know that there was authority. But you now know that you can cast out the devil. And when you have such challenges, you stand up by the authority of the blood and say, in the name of Jesus. Sometimes you don't even know who is talking about you, but you can feel people are talking about you. I don't know if you are there. You can just enter an office, you can feel strange. Something they happen here. Sometimes you are somewhere and they are mentioning your name. You are just feeling somehow. You don't even know what it is, but you can feel it. Don't ignore it. Angel is tapping your shoulder, whispering into your ear. You, you, spiritually literate, you can't speak. It's another time you say in the name of Jesus, wherever my name is mentioned by fire. Amen. Amen. They show up like fire. They say, ah, in we, you get in we. That's how it works. It's spiritual. If you are not taught, you just think everything is normal. Why are you feeling like that suddenly? Somebody is chopping your name somewhere. You will find out that sometimes you call somebody and say, ah, I just mentioned your name. Why? Why? You call it coincidence. That is the realm of the illiterate. There is no coincidence anywhere. Everything is a calculated event based on some prerequisites. Put them together, you will get the results. Are we making some sense? After the discussion in the realm of the spirit, the Bible says that same day, everything Job had collapsed. And for every one problem he had, there was somebody that Satan left to go and report. So that it will enter him well. Go and check it. I'm not the one that wrote the Bible. It's there. Every problem. Why? Satan is the one. The Bible calls him the devourer. Seeking for who he can devour. He will not find you. Amen. Say that amen like a thunder. I said he will not find you. Somebody be so committed, and what it trips me is that Satan is doing his work better than some of us. Ah, uh -uh. constantly. No, they forget. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. <laughs> constantly, as a spirit, using every machination, blackmail to make you hate the one that will do you good, sets you in opposition against the people that God has planted into your life to bless you. Make sure that things just happen. Ah, uh -uh. oh God, let me tell you the truth. Oh. Don't be a spiritually literate again. Stretch out your right hand. Say in the name of Jesus. I command that wherever my name is mentioned, by the power of the blood and by the fire of the Holy Ghost, I am well represented. By the token of the blood, I scatter, I shatter every gathering that is not of the Lord. I scatter their conversations. Every accusation, I turn it over. Now, by the power in the name of Jesus, Satan, I cast you out. Every devil, every manipulation, every man, every woman sent of darkness against me or mine, I rebuke, I cast out, I frustrate, I thwart your plans. Now in the name of Jesus, say a big amen. amen. What we just did, you'll be hearing the testimony. Amen. Behind the testimony. So we've been speaking about this healing and health and it's a very important conversation. Because Satan wishes to get your body down. Ah. You know that your, your being alive is somebody's frustration. That you are alive. Ah. If you went to some... <laughs> I don't know if I can say this. Let me just try. I hope you can handle this one I'm about to say. It's not anything bad that I'm sure someone... Did you ever go to a secondary school that you were wishing one senior would die, die the next day? Eh? That you were praying, oh God. Let this man not... Let him not see tomorrow. Let him not wake up. If you came to the kind of secondary school I went to, <laughs> how do I explain this? So sometimes it sounds like exaggeration, but it's not. You literally be praying, Lord, let him not see tomorrow. Let him not see tomorrow. So there was one particular one that died. True, true. We went for a holiday, he didn't come back. People gather and say, It is our God that answered prayer. We're in GS3. Our God is a prayer answering God. I was a fellowship president too. If you know what I'm saying. But in just with God that answer by fire. Because some people are wicked. Human nature. Wicked. I want you to understand that they are still learning work from Satan. No, no matter how wicked they are, they are still learning. Besides Satan. Now you now have people that Satan is using to express himself against you. Listen, people of God, don't joke with your money 
and your health and your eternity. Don't joke with those three things. Your money, your health, and your eternity. Satan does not mind. When you are broke, it will look like you are not serving God. Hmm. When you are sick, don't. some people take pleasure in being sick because they feel that they get more attention in sickness. They now get them, do you want meek or bon vita? They today will say meek with your mouth. They feel that they get more attention. The attention they don't feel that they get. They say, do you want egg in the Indomie, fried or boiled? And in sickness, you say, fried, fried. <laughs> you, yeah, criminal. <laughs> you think you are clever. <laughs> true, true, we will bring the egg and the milk home. But we are looking at you. And then some people like taking care of sick people. <laughs> they, they, we, we, that we cook the food. He has finished it. He said, finished it. Ah, you are sick and you are finishing this food. He said, that the guy is eating. They said he should use it for his drugs. <laughs> Whereas it's you consuming the food. What's my point? Don't joke with sickness. You need to be interested in being healthy. As I'm talking, some people think that everybody wants to be healthy. Not everybody wants to. There was a certain man that they told him they were going to release him from the prison and he was crying. You know why he was crying? His prison life was better than his home life. Prison is sure you eat something. Prison is sure that you have somewhere to say you are safe. She means to walk. Some people don't like to go home from prison. Some people are not really ready to have children. You would think that everyone wants to have a child. It's not true. I mean, a man that wants to have a child is running away from his wife. Continue, and you want to be called daddy or yo-yo. A blind man, Jesus had to ask him, what do you want me to do? For God's sake, it's not logical that you are blind. Jesus should know now. Bros J, you should know. For where? He came and stood and said, what do you want? What do you want? Because some people will say, um, Lord, I'm hungry. Just give me some more money. Don't think everybody wants to be healthy. That's my point. Don't think everybody wants healing. Some people enjoy, and uh, there was a, <laughs> I don't know if this is true. I don't like say for, but let me, you know, I do a disclaimer. I don't know if this is true. There was this guy that I was told that was, he, I mean, was healed. I don't know. If, I really don't feel it's true somewhere in my mind, but I don't doubt all things are possible. That he was healed and he was angry that why did they heal him? Because it was from that, his condition, he was making money. Now he's healed, how will he go back to heal? Where does he want to start from? He didn't go to school. This is what he's been used to. He would have probably been more profitable being a beggar. Don't, if you are not in, listen to what I'm telling you. Don't think that because it is good, you want it. If you are really good, God wants you to want it. Uh -huh. He wants you to want, just like children. Children are good. They are the blessing and the heritage of God. And guess what, people of God, you need to be, are you there with me, please? Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Now hear this. That it is good. God wants you to own it. Is the point I made. And I shared with us that though God has settled it spiritually for us, he wants us to possess it physically. I shared with us four things. First service people, if you're around, please mention for us. What are the four things I mentioned? Embrace the word of God. You need to have acceptance that the word of God is what will heal you. The Bible says he sent his word and he healed their diseases. Stop before you take it to the phone to call the doctor. Take it to the throne. Call God first. Father, I had a condition. I went to see the doctor some time back. You know, some of us. And I went to say, ah, Lord, this situation, what's going on here? What was going on? And the thing was degenerating. While I was still thinking and talking about something, suddenly I noticed that, I mean, amazingly, and, and please, if you are using your phone, be discreet here, yeah, all right? Not everybody is looking at me. Some people are looking at what's using your phone. You know, I can see all of us now, so I can see what, who is doing it. I can call names. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I can do it, but I'll just allow you change so that your behavior can enter eternal life. Uh -huh, because uh -huh, the good part is that I, the way this church is, when we switch from civil to military, you will not know. We will deal with you and cleanse you with the blood of Jesus and send you forward. So please be discreet and be proper. If you're using your phone, maybe you're doing a transfer, just be careful. Are we making some sense here? Good. What was I saying? I'll say something before I say. Yes, embrace the word of God. Yeah, thank you. You need to embrace the word of God as the word of God is your final assurance. Listen to me. God created this world by his words. 
you need to agree that the word of God is living and powerful. Stop underestimating word. You say, I just like listening to music. Listening to music. I don't stop you. But please, listen to the word of God. Don't let it be when the word is coming. That's when you are sleeping or bored. It's a sign that your spiritual life is under attack when the word of God is boring to you. I'm telling you, your spiritual life is malnourished. When it is time for word, you say, I beg, turn it to music, Joe. I'm telling you, when there's no more appetites. You know how Satan, eh? How he works it is true. In the physical, you see that when people are ill, they don't have appetite again. The loss of appetite is proof that there's sickness somewhere. I'm telling you. So when the word of God is coming and saying, I beg, maybe we have music, I beg. I'm not saying music is not good though. I'm only telling you that you should not lose appetite. for the, you know, I, I can't tell you, if you know how I listen to music, you would think I don't listen to what? You don't have to do only music. You can do both. Am I making some sense? What time did I send you a message yesterday if you check it well? 1 a.m. 1 a.m. I was listening to a song. And I was like, ah, music director must hear this one. 1 a.m. 1.29 if I'm not mistaken. What are you doing there? That's how we live. Why would I be just living anyhow? No. I said, Kai, this guy must not sleep like this. He should hear it because I will sing this song in church. So I listen to music. But don't play with the word of God. You cannot replace music with the word. Be it unto me according to your word, according to your promises. That you sang it does not mean it is the word in you. I want to teach you this thing. When Satan came to me, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ did not look at him and say, Satan, stop this thing you are doing. The Bible says, even Satan quoted the Bible. I said, but Shebi is written. He shall give his angels charge over you. Satan! Maybe we don't understand this guy. We need to know he's a bad guy. How can you open Psalm 90 for Jesus? For Jesus, so. <laughs> then you are now, in, you, are, you are surprised Satan will do what's to you. For Jesus, koro koro, not spiritual Jesus, physical Jesus. Jesus, so not. <laughs> Jesus, doesn't that trip you? It trips me. And Satan was quoting Bible for Jesus. After all, he said he would give his angels charge over you. If you are Lord, you know, ah. So your word life must grow. Tell your neighbor for me, say your word life must grow. Quickly, let's look at it. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 22. Let me run with this. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 22. I want us to read the scripture and we'll do it before times. So quickly, let's flash through. Proverbs 4 22 says, For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Say that after me. Life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Let's say it together. Life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. What? Life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Eh? Life to those who find them and hell to all their flesh. Come on. Life to those who find them and hell to all their flesh. One more time. Life to those who find them and hell to all their flesh. One more time. Life to those who find them and hell to all their flesh. One more time. Life to those who find them and hell to all their flesh. One more time. Life to those who find them and hell to all their flesh. That's what the word of God is. It is life to those who find them and health to our flesh. So when your body is sick, before you start to shout, say, healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? As you are hearing the word of God, there's power for healing. Are you getting what I'm saying, please? Very powerful, very important. Number two, quickly, we said the name of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 3 verse 16. It says that this man through the name of Jesus, through faith in his name, has received his perfect wholeness. Perfect strength comes through the name of Jesus Christ in prayer. When we come over you and we understand what Jesus Christ, and we say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, something happens in the realm of the spirit that goes from our spirit to your spirit. The name of Jesus is real. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Please make no mistake. When we laugh and joke, does not mean that we are lacking power in our spirits. There is veracity, there is authenticity here. You must understand it. It's powerful. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Higher than every other name. Glory to God. Number three is what? What I tell you, number three is what? The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Not just when you're traveling, you say, We plead the blood, the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood, the blood of Jesus. Everybody, the blood of Have you ever seen that blood? Let me tell you something. Jesus Christ. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are shouting the blood of Jesus without drinking communion, you're only shouting words in vain. It is the communion that we refer to as the blood. It is the flesh that we take as the bread. Are you getting what I'm saying, sir? If you are not taking holy communion, you are not taking the blood. 
Lord, I plead the blood. On where? We are supposed to drink the blood. It is a transfusion into our spirits. Instead of collecting blood from hospital, that blood that you are taking as the blood of, whatever is not in the blood of Jesus will not be in your blood. That's what I'm telling you. So you now be missing communion service. Hey, it's just communion service. Continue. Every day, it's just communion service. The, this Lagos blood, you will re replace your blood with smoke. Replace your blood. Instead of you to be drinking communion every time. I'm telling you. Be sitting down inside Lama, last man bus and Lama smell. And then be saying the blood of Jesus. If you don't drink communion, you are taking in the smell of Lama. It's not the blood of Jesus you are taking. I plead the blood. Where is it? It's the communion. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 11 verse, from verse 25. It says the blood that we drink is not the blood of Jesus Christ sanctified for us. John chapter 6 verse 54 to 56. He says if anybody does not drink and eat of this blood, his life, God's life is not in him. I'm not the one that wrote it, sir. So communion is not just casual. I say, ah, let's just go and drink blood. No. Even that statement says we are drinking blood. It's not fetish. It's not jazz. When which see you serve, they go fear you. Say, ah, where are you coming from? I just went to drink blood. Ah. The guy will get your language. And guess what? In the realm of the spirit, they know Jesus has done. Ah, ah. When demons saw him, they say, hey, master. Have you come to destroy us before our time? Jesus not done. Don't stop seeing Jesus like floating Jesus. Jesus, Jesus is a bad guy. I, I need to sell that impression to you to know that. Just now one weekly. Say, go. Go, Satan. I go. go. Leave him alone. Which go? Whoa. You think that's how people get victory? They call him the lion of the tribe of Judah. When he descended, he did not descend. Hey, nice. People be peace be upon you. Which peace be no first you lady, you think it's a joke? He's slapping the darkness out of light. Are you gonna saying that Jesus did not go like a weakling to hell? He went as a lion. As a lion. The Bible says he dispossessed him that had power over death and collected the keys of death from him. You don't do that joking. You don't do that smiling. So stop seeing one Jesus as one floating Jesus. No, this Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the lion of God himself. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Very important to understand this, sir. Some of us just used to think that Jesus was one nice guy just saying, peace. You'd have added that Selim last clam to add it. It's not like that. Jesus is radical. They call him the head of principality and power. The Bible says he made a public spectacle of them. Triumphing over them on the cross. If you read it, it says he stripped them disgracefully on the, on the streets. This just is not a weekly, no. Oh, this impression. You are not like Jesus. Go and show me the Jesus. Jesus that turned out cordial. Turned out cordial. Made it himself oh, and was flogging people out from his high church. They say be like Jesus. We need to have every part of Jesus. The gentle one and the radical one. Praise the Lord. Can I go back to a gentle? Jesus is here. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying here? You must carry this consciousness that we're not saying this thing because we're religious people. Who is religious? You look at me. I've told God, if this thing is not working, I will send it back to you. I have met this Jesus and I know what I'm saying. It's real. It's real. It's fire. When you mention Jesus in the realm of the spirit, they know. They know who is who. That guy said, Jesus, I know. You know here I am. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. They know us too. Alexander, I know him. I know him. I know that guy. He did come somewhere for night. Go and ask. We say these things with understanding, sir. And we are speaking according to the grace of God granted to us. So please, make no mistake. God doesn't want you sick. Doesn't want you. God is not the reason why you are going to die. Let them never. Let's add the last one. What's the last one I said? Service. Somebody says service. Your service to God is a collateral that God will take sickness from you himself. Why are you not serving God? You are just exposed. You have no insurance. Nothing anywhere. I just, they're coming to church. They say, we should go. What's that? <laughs> Nothing anywhere. Nothing. Your name is not in the register of life. No worker, nothing. They don't even know you. The Bible says, if you serve me, I will take sickness. I will take sickness, not you. I will take sickness from your body. I will bless your bread and your water. The number of your days you will fulfill. That's what he said. None shall be barren in the land. That's what the word of God says. Exodus chapter 
Exodus 23, verse 25 to 26. So you need to know these things. These are the collaterals. Like I said, not everybody wants to be healthy, so not everybody will fulfill what I'm saying. But I want to read something to us today to introduce Wednesday's teaching. Please, if you can, don't miss Wednesday, online or on site. Let me share it with you quickly. Deuteronomy chapter 28, 28. I want to read this one. It interests me a lot. If you are blessed this morning, say amen, please. Amen. Our Jesus is not a weakling. Our Jesus is alive forever. Life to those who find them and help to all the flesh. Don't forget it. Too. Life to those who find them and help to all the flesh. Life to those who find them and help to all the flesh. Life. You can't be saying that. Satan too knows you are, in, you are conjuring power. One sister called one day and said, sir, I was praying for a, a, a longer while than normal and the room became too hot for me to stay. You were the only one in the room. Oh. You were praying. There's no way you stay and conjure power and you will not feel the presence of God with you. I'm telling you. You will know that you are not alone. Quickly, let's read that Deuteronomy chapter 23. And I want us to just wrap it up today on that. And um, I pray it will bless us. From verse 13 to 18. Let's listen to this story. The story is very interesting. And I want you to introduce the place of other factors for divine healing and health. On Wednesday last week, I was talking about herbs. That some people have a problem with Ado Jedi Jedi. Have you heard those things before? Yes, I'm going to talk a little about it if you're interested. And because I believe that healing and health is a blessing and a privilege that we should be responsible for. So I took our time to study and I tried to get God's opinion about the matter. Not just about Ado, I'm talking about other factors. Because, like we said, sickness or, so to speak, health and healing is 100% spiritual, but also 100% natural. What that means is that there are some natural things you must watch out for. And I want to introduce the first one that I saw in my scriptures. Now, the whole book of Deuteronomy 23 is very interesting. Very interesting. If you have time, go and read it. It's not very long. But it's very interesting. But I want to just take out the one that is relevant to what I'm teaching. Verse 13 to 18. Quick, let's look at it. If you have time, read the whole book. It's interesting. It tells us that we should not we should not lend money out and collect interest. Have you seen that in your Bible before? He said, when you make a vow, don't forget to fulfill it. He said, when women are this, yeah. but this part is the one that interests me most. Can we read it together? Verse 13. Please, do you have it? He says, and thou shalt have a paddle. Do you have any other translation? By any chance? Do you have? And it shall be, okay. Okay, let's read it. Along with your, okay, Okay, so which one are, you are giving us this one, Ba? So let's do it together. Now, do you can you by any chance reach verse nine? By any chance, I want to give us context quickly, please. By any chance, what I really need is in thirteen to eighteen. Thank you. So look at this story, please, please. Are we together? We are wrapping up very soon. Just please help me. Let, let me tidy it up well. When you are camped out at war with your enemies, listen to this story. He said, be careful to keep yourself from anything ritually defiling. Are you listening? He now says, if one of your men has become ritually unclean because of a nocturnal emission. What do you think that is? Eh? He wants to. What do we release at night, Abby? Yes. Answer now. What do you release at night? Ah. Is it the English or you don't want to say it? So he says, he must go outside the camp and stay there. That's poo poo. Watch this story. Are you there? I want to introduce something. Until evening, when he can wash himself, returning to the camp at the sunset. Just follow the story. You know, I told you, I'm going to 13. Please don't look at me like this. And the way some of you are looking at me is very disturbing. Can you brighten your countenance, please? Just small. Just show some people are looking for lunch this afternoon. Ah, smile, smile now. <laughs> your face is okay. We're in God's house, so not much. Please look at it. It says, mark out an area outside the camp. Are you there? Where you can go to what? Relieve yourselves. Watch the story. Now, verse 13. He said, go along with what? Your weapons have a stick with you. Now, why? After you relieve yourselves, dig a hole with a stick and cover your what? Excrement. That's excreta. 
God, your God, strolls through your camp, make you no go match shit. That's what he's saying. You know, some of us, we read the Bible like I see very holy. That's what he's saying. May God no go, tiro, ah, <laughs> for his camp. See, you know, I know that you can't read the Bible like that. Don't worry, I will help you. When I finish with you in this church, Bible will be your friend. You will understand Bible very well. Give it back to us. Let's finish it well. He is present to deliver you and give you victory over your enemies. What is he trying to tell us to avoid? Stop being dirty. Stop being dirty. Dirtiness does not allow God to defend you. Hygiene is what makes God around. If you've heard that statement before that cleanness is next to godliness, it is probably very true from this scripture. Let's finish it. Keep your camp holy. Don't permit anything indecent or offensive in God's eyes. Are you there? When you are in your house, don't leave dirt in your dustbin for too long. God comes to your house and visits you. See, it doesn't matter. Just the eggshells. It's just for three days I left that dustbin there. You are a dirty somebody that does not allow the presence of God stay long in that house. This is true also to your body. Now, don't forget we spoke about the spiritual. We've spoken about the word part of it, word, communion. But if you are dirty somebody, you will still chase the presence of God out of your life. What am I saying? I'm introducing a dimension to this matter of healing and health from this service called hygiene and exercises. After you are finished praying, be clean. Be what? There is no amount of hands we will lay on you if you are dirty somebody. That dirtiness will cancel the prayer. Do you understand what I'm saying here? So that you will not be thinking God is not healing. You know, just Christ will tell you, go and see no more. Lest a worse sickness will come back to you. Have you seen that scripture? Yes. Why? Because when people don't do that, they bring back sicknesses. And today I want to declare and just introduce in this service. Go home this week and insist on being clean. I know you might have been tidy before. I want you to improve on it. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what I want to close with today. Go home. Be intentionally cleaner than you were last week. Intentionally. Be intentionally cleaner. Be in, you will see that you will enjoy more testimonies. And I, I'm saying this prophetically now. Supernaturally, you will notice that things are better this week. Just do what I'm telling you. Be intentionally neater. Take that thing to the dustbin, throw it there. Carry your plates and drop. Do you understand? Do clean just a little extra and come back and testify. Can we do that this week? Can we do that this week? God said I should show you the scripture. It's not that I just want to show you. He said show it to them. And then if you can, read the whole thing on your own. And he will visit you this week. You will notice that there's someone in your room bringing more peace, more calm, more joy. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Just be intentionally neater. Flush your toilets. Make it clean. This thing can irritate God. Enough to mention it that he won't come and visit you when you have it. Then it's serious to God. It's not an Old Testament issue. It's important to God. We'll stop here for today. If you can come on Wednesday, please come for communion. If you can't come, join us online. Jesus is Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Thank you, Father. I want us to talk to God and say, Father, I receive grace. Thank you, Father, for all things are made beautiful. For all things are made beautiful. Are we there this, morning, this evening, I mean, this afternoon? I say, Father, thank you for your grace. We receive of your power, receive of your love. Thank you for everything you've done and said here. Let your name be glorified. Can we pray that prayer and say, Father, help me, O oh Lord. I receive grace to be neater this week. I receive grace to be neater this week. If you're not born again here, I say, Pastor, I'd like to give my life to Christ. So you'd like me to pray with you today to rededicate your life to Jesus. Please just raise up your hand. Anybody like that in our midst? Say, Pastor, I would like to be born again. Raise up your hand. I would like to pray with you. If you are here, 
You are the reason why we are gathered. That you might be born again. That you might be saved. If you are not, you are not sure if Christ comes now, you will make heaven. Please put up your right hand and let me pray with you. Anybody like that in our midst this morning? Oh, praise God. Anybody that wants to be filled with baptism of the Holy Spirit? Let us know. That's why we are here as a church. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. At this point, if you are sick in body, put your hand across the sickness or the area of concern, if you can. Put your hand across the place that hurts you. If you are sick in body, it might be your shoulder, your back, your chest, pain by your waistline, pain, wherever. Father, thank you for this opportunity to pray for your people. I curse that migraine now in the name of Jesus Christ. I curse that chest pain, that back pain, that kneecap pain. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, I command those eyes to be corrected now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak peace to your chest. That pain is ousted now in the name of Jesus. I pronounce and declare you free from that suspected issue. That symptom you have been feeling. Today, I pronounce restoration of health on your body in the name of Jesus. Whatever thing does not represent the finished works of Christ today, we violate it now. And we command the peace of God to come upon you. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. And if there be any demonic oppression, I cast it out now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name. Do you believe this this morning? Give the Lord a round of applause and I appreciate God. Check. I said give the Lord a round of applause. I'd like you to check your body knowing that the healing is taking place. I've been teaching my people about what we call instant healing, gradual healings,